Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. We are in Unit 5, Writing Linear Equations, and we are on Lesson 6, Linear Applications from a Graph. So, we're going to have a graph in each one of these problems, and the key is to pick two points that you can use from the graph to help you find the slope and the y-intercept and write your equation. So usually from a graph, you can find slope how? Well, I need to identify the slope and y-intercept. First, y-intercept. Here's my y, and here's my y-axis. And right here at b equals 1, 2, 3, 4. b equals 4, so I know my y-intercept is going to be 4 because this point is 0 comma 4 a is 0 b is 4 x is 0 the y value is 4 so my y intercept is b equals 4 so y intercept b equals 4 now I need the slope how do you find the slope well this is a graph, so you can do rise over run. You don't need to do any of those equations to figure stuff out. You can do simple box counting. So here is one point, and my rise, rise is one, two, rise two. Run, my run is left. And when you run left, it's negative, negative, one, two, three. Rise over run, so slope, m equals rise over run, and in this case, it's two over negative three. So now I know my m is two over three. Up, oh, nope, it's negative two over three. I almost messed that up. Write an equation in slope-intercept form that represents the function. Okay, y equals mx plus b. So now I just have to fill in b is 4 and m is negative 2 thirds. Keep my y negative 2 thirds x plus b is 4. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4, puffy cloud of happiness, because that's my slope and y-intercept. Yay! The next part is the important part. I can explain the meaning of the slope and y-intercept from a graph in the context of a real-world problem. That's what application means, real world problems. So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna figure out what does it mean to be the y-intercept and what is the slope doing to change that y-intercept. So, a swimming pool must be drained. Drained, does that mean putting more water in or taking water out? Well, looking at this very negative slope, I know it's gonna be taking the water out. Every few months for cleaning, the graph on the left shows a linear function that models the water level of a pool that is being drained over a period of time. What is the vertical intercept? What is that vertical intercept of the linear function? Well, vertical means up and down. I bet they mean this y-intercept right here. Yeah. Sometimes they'll throw words at you that are new words but they're not really new. They're just the same words that you've seen before. And that's your y-intercept right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna write vertical intercept is the y-intercept. And y-intercept is just where the line intercepts the y-axis. And this particular point is big. 
This is zero, 648,000. So B is 648,000. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. B equals 648,000. 648,000 what? Amount of water, hmm, in gallons. So this is 648,000 gallons. What does that information tell us about the situation? Well, this is where it began before it started to drain. So y-intercept is the beginning. So there was 648,000 gallons of water in the pool. So I'm gonna write that down. There were 648,000 gallons of water in the pool to start. Or you could say at the beginning, or you could say before they started to drain it. But that's the start, that's the beginning, 248,000. The next one says find the rate of change. You know rate of change is slope, so you're gonna find the rate of change of the graph and what does that slope tell you about the situation? Okay, so how am I gonna find rate of change? Well, I'm gonna take two points. I'm gonna take this point, and I'm gonna take this point. And I'm gonna find the rise, and I know that I'm running left. So, run left, is negative. Running left is negative, and I'm gonna do the run first, because it's easy. So from zero to 200, it's negative 200. I don't know negative 200 something, but negative 200. Now, how much water is in the pool? I started with 648,000, and now I have 248,000. Hmm, that is a hundred, nope, that's 400,000 gallons. Wow, that's a lot. I'm gonna double check it. I'm gonna subtract my Y1, my Y2 minus my Y1. Let's do some subtracting, just to be sure. 648,000 minus 248,000, and that's 400,000 gallons of water. Okay, so this, I don't even know how to write that. That's a lot, here we go. 400,000, that's the rise. So for me, rise over run is 400,000 over negative 200, so M, equals rise over run, which is 400,000 over negative 200. So I'm just gonna divide this by negative 200, and it didn't work. What happened here? 400,000 divided by negative 200. Syntax error, what? What syntax error? What did I do? That was, oh, I know what I did. I'm so silly. I used the minus sign for my, for my negative sign. You can't do that, Bono. I was wondering why it wasn't working. Divided by negative 200. Ha ha, negative 2,000. M equals negative 2,000. And what does that mean? Well, if you put in the units, you could figure it out. Gallons of water is Y, so gallons over time in hours, so this is hours, so that's over one hour. So negative 200,000 gallons in one hour. What does that mean? The water 
is, I'm going to use their word, draining. No, you forgot a bunch of letters there. Draining at negative 2,000 gallons per or in one hour. So the water is draining at negative 200,000 gallons of water per hour. Wow. Write a linear function that can model this situation. Well, what do I need for a linear function? I have the M is negative 2,000. I have the B is 648,000. So I'm just going to write Y equals M X plus B. And I'm going to fill in the negative 200,000 for M and the 648,000 for B. So Y equals negative 2,000 times X plus 648,000, the number of gallons that I started with. I got to cut commas here. So every hour, 2,000 gallons are draining from the pool, and it started with 648,000 gallons. Okay, let's try the next one. Example two. ABC Phone Company charges a flat monthly fee plus an additional cost per text. Well, I wouldn't use that because I text all the time. Okay, the graph to the right shows a linear function representing the total cost of the plan and the number of text messages sent per month. What does the vertical intercept, I'm just going to write Y intercept over that because that's the word I'm used to of this graph mean and what does it represent well let's see here's the y and i'm gonna highlight that and it intersects right here at 20. 20 what 20 dollars so what does that mean b equals dollar sign 20. and let's go back and read it flat monthly fee a flat monthly fee, I'm going to underline that because that's new. That's what you pay whether or not you use the service. A lot of things have a flat monthly fee. Phones always have a flat monthly fee. My phone has a flat monthly fee of $39.95. No matter whether I use the phone or not, that's the fee that I have to pay every month just to keep my phone. That's, it works that way with like cable television and things like that too. It's the amount you pay every month, whether or not you use the service. So this flat monthly fee of $20, the vertical intercept it would help if I spelled it correctly, wouldn't it? Come on, baby. Here we go. Ver Take coal, intercept, $20 is the flat monthly fee. And that's the amount you pay whether you use it or not. Okay, and now I need to know what is the slope of my linear function? Rise over run. Well. I'm going to find two points. I'll take this point and say, hmm, I like this one. That's easy. So my rise is what? Five. To get from 20 to 25, I rise five. And then my run is going to be, oh dear, it's between 80 and 120. So this is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 100. So this is 5 over my run is 100. Now, it's positive because it's going up, and it's positive because it's going to the right. So my slope, m equals rise over run, 
which is 5 rise over run 100. Oh, 5 over 100. 5 what over 100 what? $5 per 100 text messages. $5 per 100 text messages. Because I'm reading it right off of here. Dollars, number of messages. So $5 for, well, I could reduce, I, I'm going to reduce that. That's $1 for 20 texts. Okay, what does that mean? It means every time I text 20 people, I have to pay a buck. Okay. The slope means the text messages cost a dollar for 20. That's what it means. The slope means the text costs a dollar for 20 text. Okay. Write a linear function that represents this. Y equals mx plus b. m is 1 over 20, so y equals 1 over 20x plus b is $20. All right. Y over m and b. If you send 350 text messages, let's look over here. Text messages is X. It's on the X line. So how much would it cost? So this is X equals 350 messages or texts. What is the cost? Cost is Y equals MX plus B. I'm going to substitute 350. So, oh, I should have, what am I writing this silliness for? Bono, bono, bono. I need to use this. Y equals 1 20th times X plus $20. Y equals 1 20th times 350 plus the $20 fee. 1 20th times 350. Well, thank goodness I have my little happy calculator. Hi, Ty. 1 over 20 times 350 plus $20 is 75 over 2. That's not helping me. I need money. 37.5. Y equals 37.5. Cost. What's my cost? My cost is in dollars. So the cost is dollar sign 37.5. Wait a second. That's not money. Money always has two decimal places. That only has one. So I am going to add a zero for my decimal place. So the cost is $37.50. All right. Independent practice time. You know what to do. Do page 26 for homework. I'll talk to you soon. Wait, is there more independent practice? 27, 28, 20. Oh, you know what? Don't do all that. Just do page 26 with the silly little guy. I'll talk to you soon.